morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to start things off over in far north Queensland where we've got some intense rainfall now on the forecast there. We've also got some heavy rainfall on the forecast for southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Your support is greatly appreciated. So we're going to start things off over in far north Queensland. You can already start to see there is a little bit of shower and cloud activity already over in the Coral Sea and a few showers also streaming ashore over. Uh, in the far north Queensland, uh, precinct outside of Cairns down towards Innisfail, some showers streaming in ashore there. But as you can see on the rain forecast, especially throughout the course of today, really limited rainfall is expected to materialise. We're going to be watching the Coral Sea Islands here uh, for the formation of what is going to resemble a tropical low sometime early this week. And you can really start to see the shower and moisture activity uh, picking up by Saturday early afternoon at around midday through to about 2 pm. And that does include areas through central Queensland as well. You can see some light showers streaming in ashore uh, for areas as far south as Bundaberg and Rockhampton but the heaviest of falls will be concentrated around the Cassowary Coast in northern Queensland. You can see the low pressure system really starting to develop Saturday night into early Sunday morning and these are when the heavy falls are expected to materialise. I'm going to zoom in right to, into far north Queensland here and get a very good idea of what rainfall is expected when. This low pressure system slowly materialising with some strong wind gusts also possible through Saturday night and Sunday morning with the heavy showers before this turns into a big ball of thunderstorms and moisture streaming in a shore across far north Queensland for locations between Cairns down towards Townsville. There's also going to be some isolated heavy falls inland towards Charters Towers and Glendon outside of Mackay and the rainfall will penetrate inland towards Ravens, Home, Mareeba and Atherton in far north Queensland in the tablelands up there and we'll probably make it as far inland as Mount Carbine as well which is a significant way for some of these showers and it certainly is going to be an early season taste to the wet season. The rainfall really picks up throughout Sunday morning into early Sunday afternoon before it slowly starts to ease off early Sunday evening. The bulk of it does remain very close to the coast, if not slightly offshore, but for locations between uh, sort of Fishery Falls south of Cairns, right through Ingham, Cardwell, Innisfail, Tully, down towards Townsville and Bowen, there will be heavy showers streaming in the shore the, uh, along the coastline, and there'll also be some heavy showers over the mountainous areas inland from the coastline too. You can see Townsville also not missing out on the heavy rainfall here. They're expecting some good drops. In fact, accumulations could amount towards uh, 10 to 15 millimetres an hour at times there, and sustained for a couple of hours too, uh, until about Sunday night and to early Monday morning when the rainfall will slowly ease off. Throughout Monday and into Tuesday, the rainfall does head further south, and this is going to lead us very nicely into the next part of our video. The rainfall does also hold itself across parts of uh, central Queensland as well, down towards Rockhampton, Gladstone and Bundaberg uh, throughout Monday morning, but we're only expecting light to moderate sustained rainfall there, uh, where we're just going to be steady, seeing it steady, slow-moving shower activities, dropping sort of 10 millimetres an hour uh, throughout Sunday night into Monday morning uh, for some areas in this part of central Queensland. But the rainfall is going to start to pick up then further south, but we will talk about that in just a few minutes. We want to get through the rainfall accumulations to this part of Queensland. You can see that the rainfall accumulations over the next 24 hours are negligible, but for areas around Bartle Ferry, uh, there will be some higher accumulations today up towards 10 to 15 millimetres. Showers are expected to continue throughout parts of uh, far north Queensland throughout the course of today, and they will intensify this evening. But it's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, where the bulk of the rainfall will be falling. You can see peak accumulations above 150 millimetres, but they will be remaining close to the coast if not slightly offshore. Cairns not expecting too much in the way of rainfall, only about 10 millimetres there. The Daintree as well, only about 10 to 15 millimetres. They're really going to miss out in the falls from this um weather system. Inland communities such as Atherton and then down towards Mareeba, you're looking at between 10 and 30 millimetres of pretty dicey hit and miss rainfall. It doesn't look like it's going to be uh, consistent and it's going to be very unpredictable for those locations as well. However, once you get to the coastline, Innisfail and Tully are very predictable up to 100 millimetres of rainfall. I reckon tomorrow they'll be up to 30 millimetres and through Sunday uh, uh, Sunday morning especially, potentially up to 70 millimetres of rainfall for some of these locations. Cardwell and Ingham are probably going to be picking up the most amount of rainfall. I reckon South Mission Beach as well could pick up a significant amount of rainfall from this weather event. You can see the offshore islands outside of Ingham up towards 140 or 150 millimetres there. Townsville as well not missing out the rainfall this time. They're looking at up to 80 millimetres on this forecast here. However, when you look at other forecast models, the rainfall there becomes very hit and miss. Still, Townsville expecting at least 5 or 10 millimetres of rainfall, but I do think this 100 millimetres that is now in the forecast for Townsville, or up to 100 millimetres, I think that is a little bit 
bullish at this time, and I'm more inclined to run with the Bureau of Meteorology's 10 to 20 millimeters of rainfall for Townsville. Down towards air as well, some good falls expected there. Again, I think it's going to be a case like Townsville. The rainfall is going to be pretty hit and miss for uh, a lot of these locations outside of the immediate vicinity of the tropical areas in far north Queensland. The central Queensland coastline as well, looking at some decent falls as well, especially through Sunday night into Monday morning, down towards Rockhampton, potentially up towards 15 to 20 millimeters as well. And the rainfall penetrating inland too uh, by this forecast, at least some decent falls out towards Charters Towers and the mountains outside of Huendon. Some good falls are expected po uh, or possible out there. Again, the rainfall, once you get further inland, will be hit and miss and pretty challenging to predict and forecast. Now that does us very nicely for far north Queensland and also a little bit of a forecast for central Queensland. It's now southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales that I want to cover here. You can see it by Monday morning, in fact into early Monday morning we're already starting to see showers and storms materialise offshore from the northeastern New South Wales coastline and the southeastern Queensland coastline, especially for locations between Fraser Island down towards uh, Coffs Harbour, including Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast. Now the showers will pick up, especially for inland areas throughout Monday morning and into early Monday afternoon afternoon and then the rainfall will really start to kick in by Monday night into early Tuesday morning where it will be heavy at times especially for areas in the southern extremities of the Sunshine Coast. Also some heavy falls possible in the northeastern corner of New South Wales for the hills and mountains outside of Coffs Harbour. There are some good falls expected out there but it's Tuesday that's going to be the icing on the cake in terms of rainfall with this low pressure system being just offshore and an onshore flow funneling some pretty moist air ashore. This is just going to result in rainfall upon rainfall upon rainfall with heavy showers streaming in a throughout Tuesday and Wednesday. Now from these heavy showers and storms the rainfall is going to be pretty hard to predict however we are expecting at least 10 millimeters to fall for this entire area of southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales throughout Tuesday but I do reckon rainfall accumulations uh, in terms of a maximum number they're going to be a little bit harder to predict. I do imagine a lot of places are going to pick up between 25 and 50 millimeters but there are certainly the chances of areas especially in mountainous regions uh, along the Sunshine Coast around Gympie and then down towards some mountainous areas outside of the Brisbane metro area that could pick up potentially 100 to 125 millimetres through Tuesday and Wednesday with these showers and storms persisting into early Wednesday afternoon before they do clear out early Wednesday evening and into Wednesday night. The showers are still expected to linger through Wednesday and into Thursday morning as well but they will be nothing on more in terms of rainfall on Thursday. It will be nothing compared to what has fallen through Tuesday and Wednesday. I do imagine from about Tuesday midday through to about Wednesday early morning that will be the wettest period of time for this part of Queensland and this part of New South Wales. Maybe for New South Wales the rainfall will be about six hours behind what it is for Queensland. However, I do imagine that the heaviest of falls will be reported Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. So take extreme care when you are on the roads because some of these showers are going to be very heavy indeed. Now rainfall accumulation is what you guys are all interested in. Well, there are going to be some big accumulations across this part of southeastern Queensland. We're going to start up north and head further south. You can see peak accumulations outside of Mackay between 25 and 100 millimetres. Again, I do feel like that is pretty bullish, especially considering the other forecast models here. But once you get sort of south of the line of Rockhampton inland to Longreach, the rainfall becomes very predictable and it doesn't look like it's going to be uh, much, well, there's not really much up to debate in terms of what is going to fall. The rainfall is predictable, but it will be hit and miss for some of these locations. So take this forecast with a heavy pinch of salt. Your location might completely miss out or it might get double what is on the forecast here. Again, we're going to have to wait and see until about Monday or Tuesday to really break that number down. Rockhampton expecting 20 millimetres down towards Gladstone and Agnes Water about 100 millimetres expected there. Bundaberg as well expecting between 50 and 80 millimetres of rainfall. Areas along Fraser Island, some pretty heavy rainfall expected there, a steady 100 millimetres. But it's once you get down in towards the Sunshine Coast and the mountainous areas outside of Brisbane, a pretty steady 100 to 200 millimetres is possible. Inland areas outside of Gympie, very wet August rainfall here up to 200 millimeters expected records could fall from this weather event if this amount of rainfall does materialize and 200 millimeters is certainly enough to set off some flooding in this part of Queensland not major flooding I don't think we're going to be seeing moderate to major flooding but I do definitely expect minor flooding to be a problem in this part of Queensland good rainfall for the Brisbane metro area as well up to 115 millimeters there Gold Coast slightly dry with 100 millimeters in the northeastern parts of New South Wales looks like a pretty steady 100 millimeters as well um, 
In this part of southeast Queensland and northeastern New South Wales, I'm just going to simplify it. The Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast, Brisbane, down towards Cape Byron, Lismore and Coffs Harbour. Expect 100 millimetres of rainfall and expect 50 millimetres of rainfall possible either side of that. So you could be getting between 50 and 150 millimetres of rainfall. It's a hard forecast to make. It's very challenging. The Bureau of Meteorology has a massive scope of possibility in terms of what rainfall they're expecting. I think Brisbane's got 4 to 45 millimetres coming through on Monday. So the Bureau of Meteorology is having a hard time predicting what sort of rainfall is going to be coming ashore but I do expect a lot of places to pick up at least 50 millimeters of rainfall and I do also expect places that are typically a little bit wetter than the average to pick up at least 100 to 150 millimeters of rainfall and I would not be shocked if three-day accumulations in this part of southeastern Queensland amounted to 250 millimeters certainly some very wet rainfall is coming ashore here and it is rather unusual for August this sort of stuff we generally see a little bit later on into spring sort of September October even November we're uh, normally seeing this sort of rainfall. It's more of a summer weather pattern here. So August, certainly not expecting this type of rainfall to come ashore. And like I did say a few minutes ago, potentially threatening some of the records in this part of southeastern Queensland. We can't be neglecting the wind threat as well. With this low pressure system, there are going to be some strong winds offshore up towards 35 to 40 knots. So again, boating or fishing, you might be seeing the amount of rainfall and thinking, well, it's a good time to go fishing. But unless you're uh, staying right on the shore within a couple of hundred metres of the shore, it looks like these wind gusts are are going to be quite gnarly on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So make sure you do stay safe and take extra caution if you are around the water. And I do advise against boating on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday as well. And with that as well, the wave threat is certainly going to be elevated too. With the low pressure as well, the swells are going to be quite high up towards four or five metres for some of these locations here. So again, boating definitely not advisable at this time. It certainly is going to be a period of time where you should be staying inside or staying at least uh, away from the shore because it looks like these waves and winds are going to be quite high indeed, especially for locations in the southeast of Queensland. Northeast and New South Wales and the central parts of Queensland do miss out just because of how they are uh, shaped in relation to this low pressure system. But it looks like southeastern Queensland is going to cop a beating in terms of seas and winds from this weather event. Now that's a very long-winded forecast for this part of Queensland. If I have left anything unanswered, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I will try and get back to as many people as I can throughout the course of today. It is going to be a wet one. It, again, isn't totally out of the ordinary. It is certainly unusual for August, but one in a 10-year weather event. It's not something that they have never seen before. So again, take extra care when you are uh, making decisions around the weather and what you're going to be doing in this part of Queensland and New South Wales for this weekend and into early next week. Now, we're going to do what we did yesterday in terms of the forecast for the southern states. We're going to rapid fire through all of them because, again, we're not talking about severe weather across a large section of the southern states this week. We're just talking about a couple of cold fronts moving through. The first one of them is going to be impacting Western Australia starting from tomorrow afternoon and into early Sunday morning. Crossing the southwest capes at around Saturday night, tomorrow night at around 10 or 11 p.m. with some damaging winds possible up towards 70 or 80 kilometers an hour and then some heavy falls also possible there as well. Up to 30 millimeters of rainfall could fall. The Perth metro air expecting up towards 20 millimeters on Sunday morning with also the chance of a thunderstorm too and some good rainfall as well extending as far north as Geraldton with up to 10 to 15 millimeters possible there with the odd thunderstorm strike also expected. The rainfall making it out into the, at least the western and the northern extremities of the wind, but with potentially up to 15 millimetres of falling uh, falling in some locations uh, around northern and for locations th further north of northern up towards Kalani or Dalwallanu, and then the rainfall does peter out once it gets into the eastern parts of the wheat belt and into the gold fields and the Murchison too. Still there could be some heavy falls across areas between the line of Geraldton up towards Calvary and inland towards Murchison Station. We won't be writing out heavy falls out towards there. Another cold front expected to sweep in behind it as well on Monday morning. This could bring some more showers and the odd storm as well for the southwest of Western Australia before the first cold front makes its way over towards the eastern states of South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania crossing the coast Tuesday afternoon for those areas. Again, negligible rainfall expected for South Australia and Victoria but we could be seeing up towards 15 millimetres to the west coast of Tasmania and some Light showers expected for both Melbourne and Hobart through Tuesday and Wednesday. Behind it, a high pressure system is going to establish itself, and that means Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night going to be pretty cold indeed. So make sure you do rug up and prepare for some frosts. They should be easing out by Friday with the passage of another cold front expected to sweep in on the 16th of August, and then that will turn into a little bit of rainfall for the west coast of Tasmania. Some showers also possible for Melbourne and Hobart as a result of that cold front, and some snow flurries also expected on the high peaks in Tasmania, Victoria, and New South Wales. 
Styles 2. Again, nothing too crazy expected before another cold front sweeps up from the south and impacts Western Australia by next Saturday. And you can see it here, it is moving up pretty high from the south here if the forecast does want to load, but it doesn't look like it wants to here. Oh no, there it goes. And you can see it crossing the coast by Saturday early afternoon into Saturday evening. This one here does look like a pretty interesting low pressure system. And between the other forecast models, they don't really know what to make of this weather system here. So I'm going to take this forecast with a very heavy pinch of salt. I do think that a lot will change with this low pressure system expected to impact Western Australia next weekend on Saturday and Sunday the 17th and 18th of August. But again, we could be seeing a little bit of rainfall there. Yeah, again, this cold front is moving in a very weird manner. I do think that we're going to have to wait and see what this weather system actually does over the coming couple of days because that is a very weird behavior for a cold front and a low pressure system, especially uh, over Western Australia. We don't normally see it stalling low pressure systems for two days at a time. In terms of other winter weather, we are looking at a bit of a cold front sweeping up next weekend as well on Friday and Saturday, the 16th and 17th of August, respectively for Tasmania. They could be bringing some snow flurries to the high peaks and we could be seeing the odd shower as well for locations in Victoria and South Australia. So just a heads up there, it does look like there is going to be a pretty steady stream of cold front activity, weak cold front activity at that over the coming couple of days for the southern states or over the coming week, to be honest, for the southern states. In terms of rainfall, it is a little bit hard to predict for the south west of Western Australia just with that other cold front coming through but for Perth we're looking at up to 20 millimeters from the weather system coming through on Saturday or on Saturday night into Sunday morning and then into Monday as well uh, some higher accumulations across the southwest capes up to 30 millimeters is possible and even into the Murchison as well some decent accumulations are possible up there negligible rainfall for South Australia a few showers here and there also for Victoria very hard to predict what rainfall is coming through west coast of Tasmania as well expecting a few drops of rainfall from this weather event but apart from that it looks high and dry across the southeast. It's just this rainfall event over in uh, the eastern states that we are really looking at here and watching very closely because this is a lot of rainfall that is about to stream ashore, especially for this time of the year. And there's certainly a forecast that we're going to need to be watching very closely. Again, if I have left anything unanswered or if you've got any questions or comments about the forecast, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. I do look forward to getting through as many as I can throughout the course of today. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. We're just a few away from 17,000. So again, your support has been recently Great, greatly appreciated. Uh, if you are um, a special shout out rather to the channel sponsors, their names are on screen right now and I could not run this show without them and their support is also greatly appreciated. But that is all for me today and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.